There are now some Fedora forks that are quite interesting, but what are they really good for? Good question. After this video you will know if the distro Nobara is the better Fedora. My name is Michael and I am passionate about Linux and open source and have been for over 20 years. Now let's get it started. Honestly, Nobara is a young distro for gamers and streamers. It is made by gamers for gamers. It's published by Red Hat employee Thomas Kreider. I hope I pronounced it right. He's also known as Glorious Egg Roll. The basis of Nobara is Fedora Workstation. Fedora 38 is currently the latest version, although Nobara still operates on a Fedora 37 basis. In addition to Fedora base, there are extensions corresponding to the target group, such as the Wine runtime environment required for gaming. Steam is also pre-installed, as are gaming clients such as Lutris. The project also comes with an optimized Linux kernel. But besides the optimizations for gamers, there is one serious feature of Nubara that deserves much more attention in my eyes. Because the GNOME desktop is adapted in an edition and does not come with vanilla GNOME like Fedora Workstation. But we will take a closer look at that later. Let's come to the technical key points. Since I couldn't find any separate information on the minimum requirements, I'll assume those of Fedora 37 workstation, which would be a 2GHz dual-core processor or newer, 2GB of RAM or more, 15GB disk space or more. More is always better here. And please note, the 2GB RAM refers to an economical spin, for example, the XFCE one. For Fedora or Nobara with GNOME, I would recommend at least 4, better 8GB or more. Nobara is a semi-rolling distro, means the middle between LTS and rolling, so newer than LTS, but not quite as much movement as rolling. Don't misunderstand. The Fedora base of Nobara always delivers the latest Linux kernel and important components are already refreshed, but not every package, as it is the case with rolling distros. Nobara supports only 64-bit architecture. The package manager DNF is included to manage the RPM packages. In addition, Nobara package manager, also known as YAM extender, and the Flatpak container solution are in place. If you are curious and want to install Nobara, go to nobaraproject.org and click on Download Nobara in the upper right corner here. You are now spoiled for choice of desktop because the following desktops are offered. Gnome Shell with extension, Gnome Shell Vanilla and KDE Plasma. Click on download for your choice and then download the ISO. Just click here on download for example. If you want the KDE version, just click here and the download of the ISO file will be started. If you want to install the ISO, you have to flash it on a medium such as a USB stick with a tool, for example, Etcher. After you flash it, reboot your system, boot from the USB stick and then run the live mode and then start the installer and go through the steps of the install wizard. The target group is gamers and streamers. That's what the most tests say, but I would go a bit farther and open the way for normal desktop users, casual desktop users as well, because here you get more than with Fedora, but more on that later. So please don't head off now and start with Nubara. Just be patient and watch the video. Let's come to the system measurement. The system took out 11 GB of disk space. The memory requirement was 1.4 GB. The number of pre-installed packages after the first start was 2,296 RPM packages and 9 flatpak containers. Nobara 37 is shipping GNOME Shell 43.2 at the time of creating this video. As you can imagine, I have the edition with the extensions installed. This one comes with some interesting add-ons. For example, Nobara GNOME Layouts is included. Let's open it. Start menu layouts and here you find Nubara desktop layouts. With this tool you can customize the layout of your desktop. You like Windows 10? Then just choose traditional. You like Windows 11? Then choose 11. You like the interface of Mac OS? Then choose Pineapple. You like vanilla GNOME? Then just choose GNOME. 
You like GNOME 2? Nowadays more or less Mate desktop, then choose GNOME 2. Or you like the Ubuntu legacy desktop Unity, then choose Unity. I will now switch to 11. The trained eye will not have failed to notice that we can select a color scheme here. This is some kind of in-house development that I welcome. But you have to know if you want to choose the color, you can select it and then you have to provide your password and you have to log out and log in again and then you will see the new color theme. This affects, for example, in the file manager, the colors of your folders. If you want to choose green, then the folders are green. May you know it from Linux Mint and something like that. I will keep it blue as it is for now. All these gimmicks go via the Nubara Welcome Assistant, which we'll come back to in a moment. Let's check the pre-installed software. We have Linux kernel 6.2. As browser, we have Firefox. As email client, there is nothing. As office package, there is only office. And as software container, there is Flatpak. Let's come to the pre-installed software. The software stack is similar to Fedora 37. No mail client but an office with only office. If you have other ideas, you can find supplies in the GNOME Software Center. Just open it and then search it. For example, let's use Spotify. Select Spotify. And after the application details are loaded, we can install. But first, I recommend you to check the source. It is Flatpak, that's fine. Install, and the software container will be provided a couple of seconds later. Other differences to Fedora 37 are, for example, Steam and Lutris. The Nubara Package Manager is an alternative to DNF in a terminal or GNOME shell and makes a far better impression than, for example, DNF Dragora. Here you can update the system, manage RPM packages as well as Flatpak packages. You can also search and install software like I will show you in a few seconds. So here we go. If you want to search an application, for example, let's use GIMP. Then hit the search field here and provide the package name, like I said, GIMP, and then you can select and install GIMP. An equal procedure is here with Flatpaks. You can go to Flatpaks. I installed on Google Chromium. As I discovered, it is not possible to search for Flatpak packages and install them here. If you want to install a Flatpak package, I recommend you to open GNOME Software Center, search it and install it. Overall, you can also update the system. Just click here and update system. Provide your user password. And then wait a minute or two. I don't know how long it will take. There shouldn't come up anything now. It has detected a flatback container and asks, shall it update or not? I will say yes. At least to check it. And here's an update for ungoogle chromium. I say yes and let it and let it proceed. And now my system is up to date and all is fine. If you use an NVIDIA graphics card in your system, take a look at Nobara NVIDIA Wizard. Unfortunately, I don't have it here and I can't demonstrate it in detail. Timeshift is also included and can fully exploit its potential in connection with ButterFS subvolumes. With Fedora 37, as with the current Fedora 38, this is still one of my criticism. Fedora has supported ButterFS by default for a while, but the subvolumes are not created and mounted during the installation. You have to do it manually, but not with Nubara. You can select it here. I already set time shift up. So if I click on settings, then you can see ButterFS. And if I hit OK, it is proven that it is set up with ButterFS. If there would no subvolumes, there a pop-up would come up and inform me that it's not possible to use it with ButterFS. So it's good overall. Let's close it. And now let's come back to the Welcome Manager. Let's go to the first steps and see what we have here. You have here update the system. That's what we did a few minutes ago. You can install some media codexes and libraries. 
you can install proprietary NVIDIA driver, you can install more apps from the GNOME Software Center, or if you use KDE Plasma, you can use it via Discover, and you can install web apps. Let's launch it. If you in the past used Linux Mint, then you know the Web App Manager. It's the same tool here. This is some kind of wrapper for browser interfaces that are provided in your system in a feel like a native app. Well, recommended additions. Install Blender, KDE NLive, OBS Studio or Discord. Optional steps. Install proprietary AMD driver. If you use Xbox One controllers, you can use X1 drivers or Proton GE. Next one is look and feel. You can change the login manager, get new themes and icons. This function does not work currently. If you hit it, Firefox. Okay, that was just the issue in, the, in my previous test. Here you find all you need. Choose a layout. It's a layout switcher I've already shown you. Oops, close. Theme your desktop will launch the GNOME Tweaks tool here under Appearance. You can make some changes, for example, for the icons, shell, or legacy applications. If you want to install additional extensions, go here and it's open Extension Manager. Here you can search for extensions and install them. Troubleshoot issues, visit the troubleshoot issue page, visit documentation and update system. That's some kind of redundancy. Join the community via Discord server or subreddit. Contribute to Nubara and some credits. That's all. Let's go back to the in depth question Is Nubara the better Fedora? In my eyes, yes, for those who don't like vanilla GNOME. I'm one of those. For me, the bare GNOME is not enough by far and I am not averse to the idea of offering Femia desktops concept either. I think it makes the transition to Linux easier for normal users. This has nothing to do with the fact that if you use Linux you have to learn a new interface. Why should that be? It doesn't hurt anyone and if it's good for the Linux desktop, then so be it. After all, there is no leading Linux desktop that could compete with the Windows or Mac OS interfaces. From that point of view, it's fine for me. The little things that come with Nubara round off the package. But smaller distros are not without controversy. Admittedly, the initiator is employed by Red Hat and undoubtedly has the relevant expertise for this. But what if he's busy with projects or takes a longer holiday, sabbatical or unexpectedly falls ill for a longer period of time? This is the crux of the matter because point 11 of the FAQ deals with that. Thomas made a distro because he needed it and it should be also easy for his father to install. He does that and it goes on to say, as stated in the project goal, some of us have the technical skills to solve problems, but sometimes we just don't have time. Part of the goals is to keep those problems to a minimum. That makes sense. And as long as they are just problems, not security issues, you can get over it. I didn't notice any bugs, by the way. Everything runs without a hitch. So let's come to my conclusion or closing notes. I like Nubara. It's a great distro that improves Fedora in crucial areas. Why doesn't Fedora actually adapt these changes? Because I'm not coming out of here with a blank recommendation. If you use Fedora, the distro could be interesting for you. But an online change is not possible, so you would have to reinstall. Most serious, however, is the fact that it seems to be a one-man show that is still very young. Nubara was launched at the end of 2022. So watch out. There is definitely a lack of experience. As I said, if you have a second computer or not averse of trying something different, then maybe yes. It is indeed a very good suggestion for improving Fedora. But if you are a normal desktop user who just wants the computer to run, then honestly I would not use Nubara. If you are still keen on it, then just install it in a VM and play with it without any risk. So, what are your impressions of Nubara? Do you share my opinion that it could be the better Fedora or do you have a different opinion?
share it with us in the comments. If you like Linux videos, stay tuned and subscribe to my channel so you'll be well fed in the future. Feel free to give a thumbs up and activate the bell. Thank you for the kind attention and see you next time ladies and gentlemen. Peace. Thank you.